day, good day. There you go, and what do you know? Don't strike a light. Good day, good day. And how you go, and just say good day, good day, good day, and you'll be right. Now, in today's prophecy update, there are five main articles to draw your attention that has transpired in the last、uh, several days. One came out of the Jerusalem Post that talks about how Iran uranium enrichment site opens for the first time in two years. So, the first time since the Iran nuclear agreement was signed, the entrance gate to Iran's、uh, uranium enrichment facility was opened, and activity at the compound commenced, according to satellite images taken last Sunday and published on Thursday. In the photos provided by the ImageSatNat International,、uh, structures that were built recently in the nuclear compound are visible, as well as the buses and other vehicles parked outside the complex. Within the compound was also part of nuclear program of Iran discovered on the satellite、uh, back in、uh, 2009, and then in January. Uh, of 2012, the UN nuclear watchdog IAEA announced that the uranium at the facility had been enriched to 20 percent, and the facility itself was shown. It was built on a mountainside, apparently to protect it from a possible attack from Israel. And as a part of the nuclear agreement,、uh, most of the centrifuges were supposedly dismantled, and according to the IEA report,、uh, and was converted to civilian purposes. But according to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who referred to this particular facility、uh, during his speech on Monday when he unveiled the massive cache of secret documents obtained in an Israeli intelligence operation this year, showing that Iran had developed a secret, a secret nuclear weapons program, and within his speech,、uh, he said that the evacu.、Uh, Excavation, sorry,、uh, are continuing on a mountainside compound.、Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu also accused Iran of lying to the six powers that negotiated with it back in 2015 to reach an agreement on its nuclear program. The cash Netanyahu presented uh, with uh, revealed the documents in which the Iran leadership instructed those responsible for the nuclear program to develop five ten kilowatt um, ten uh, warhead, which be mounted on ballistic missiles. And so, this is something that、uh, the Israeli have documented. Other intelligence have documented this sort of thing as well. So they're lying about their nuclear program. Uh, all along, they've been building and developing their nuclear weapons. So it's just something to keep posted on. And again, this is uh, uh, military arsenal and、uh, weapons that they will eventually use for the Ezekiel 38 war. So this is why this is important、uh, because the、uh, whole scene of Iran developing its program so it can try to eliminate and wipe out Israel and and.、Uh, Be a major threat in the world. Also, this coming Saturday, the May twelfth, or the, our Sunday,、uh, will be the nuclear、um, decision for if the U.S. is going to pull out of this deal or not.、Uh, and this is a key、uh, puzzle piece that I believe plays into the Ezekiel thirty-eight scenario. If Iran continues to go down this military、uh, nuclear capabilities for attacking Israel. This is why this is an important deal because this deal gave Iran what it wanted: the the financing to help it, the time to develop the nuclear weapons, and it's one of those horrendous deals that、uh, we hear、uh, for those who have read through the、uh, particular report. Also, within this particular deal, there's a report that came out of uh, the. Uh, Uh, different websites that talk about how Iran's foreign minister、uh, says no、um, renegotiating the deal. So he went onto YouTube、uh, on Thursday to criticize President Trump's、uh, threat to withdraw from the nuclear deal, and saying that Iran will not renegotiate or add unto the atomic accord. So in this particular video,、uh, the foreign minister also posted. Uh, to uh, Trump's favorite social media platform, Twitter, 
and appeared to be taking his message uh, to the masses uh, after earlier speaking to outlets uh, across the United States to defend the deal, to lie to people. And it comes as Trump will signal that he will probably withdraw from this agreement on May 12th, as we just mentioned in the previous article, um, that if it's not renegotiated and changed, he will pull out. Those changes have included proposals to limit Iran's ballistic missile program, which Tehran says it has uh, a, a defensive deterrent. Uh, and within this particular video, it was like a five-minute video or so, uh, where uh, the foreign minister in his office delivering a speech, uh, he offers uh, a bit of a background first of the deal before laying into Trump and criticizing uh, those in Europe uh, for offering the United States more concessions from their particular pockets. And so on, uh, as the video talks about how on 11 occasions since the UN nu nuclear watchdog has confirmed that Iran has implemented all of its obligations, um, uh, this foreign minister said, and by the way, he studied, and I think it was in San Francisco State University and uh, schooled in the United States, so he's got a decent English uh, in his speaking. But he contrasted uh, that the U.S. consistently violated the agreement, especially by bullying others uh, from doing business with Iran. He goes on to say, let me be absolutely clear once and for all. We neither outsourced our security nor will we negotiate or add onto the deal that we have implemented in good faith. And again, the article continues on. But basically, what we are seeing from a, an Israeli perspective, the intelligence perspective, as they've gone through all the different documents and reports and um, the things like that, we're seeing that there's a different uh, message that the Iranians are dictating and trying to communicate, and it's just a bunch of lies to try to get people to say, yeah, the Iran deal's okay. And basically, it just crosses a lot of red lines uh, in the threat against Israel and other nations around the world. Another interesting article that came out of the Bloomberg uh, website that talks about how Iran and Israel on path to war as Middle East tinderbox awaits spark. And so uh, this article talks about how there have been coups and uh, revolutions and external invasions and proxy conflicts, but the Middle East hasn't seen a head-to-head -head war between major regional powers since the 1980s. Uh, there is a growing risk that one is about to break out in Syria, uh, putting Israel and Iran uh, against each other, and uh, we do see that biblically. And again, this is a secular article, and it's exactly what Ezekiel 38 talks about. But the Islamic Republic forces are entrenching, and after joining the fight to prop up President Bashar Assad. And so the Jewish state, um, perceiving a direct threat on its border, is subject them to a escalating barrage of air strikes, and nobody expects those strikes to go unanswered. So... You're seeing, as we talked about, usually on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, we talk about these threats and these uh, potential for war uh, and the rumors of war is Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38. So all these pieces of the puzzle get closer and closer together. On to some separate news items, uh, just another interesting, uh, as we've seen uh, throughout Europe, as they've opened in, uh, their borders to is this Islamic invasion. There was an interesting report that came out that talked about Oslo police declare we have lost the city. Islam has taken over. And this is the problem with so many cities throughout Europe and, and even some countries, they're being invaded by Islam. And so uh, it, it kind of talked about uh, this article about the different uh, crime that's going on, the rape violence uh, within Oslo itself predominantly came by Muslim immigrants. Uh, and there's a lot of other statistics this particular uh, report talks about. And that's one of the dangers. Islam is not a peaceful religion. I know people don't want to hear that. But again, you see the destruction that is happening uh, with Islam uh, throughout Europe. You just look at the statistic. You look at the police reports. You look at the, the damage that's done. Now, not all Muslims are doing this. You've got more of these radical Islamic people that are trying to invade and trying to develop their caliphate. And then one last uh, item on uh, an apostasy issue, 
There's an interesting report that came out of the Christian Journal that talks about the Episcopal Church removes term husband, wife, and the procreation for marriage to make it more LGBT compliant. And this is something that you're seeing with a lot of these other type of churches that are going in the way of apostasy and eliminating the inerrancy and the inspiration of Scripture, the final authority, uh, the, the final document, the, the, the Word of God that pertains everything to life and godliness. And what they're doing is they're changing what the Word says to accommodate this particular lifestyle. And this is a dangerous and dark path as they compromise what the Bible says to accommodate, to try to get more people into the church or to try to be more inclusive. And so they're, they're uh, um, compromising big time in what the Bible says. And God's word is very clear. Uh, about the role of a husband and a wife and and um, the male and female, um, the practices of homosexuality, um, those sort of things. And again, God's plan uh, for us to forgive us. He knows what's best for us. He created us. And God's word is true. And so you cannot compromise on, on the truth of what God's Word says. But this is what you're seeing with the Episcopal Church. Uh, many other um, denominations are going down this dangerous and dark path as well, accommodating. And so you they're changing what the Bible says to accommodate people's lifestyle. Uh, and so this is the way of apostasy, eliminating, denying fundamental truths of Scripture. And so this is a, one of those warnings. Um, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. And these people who are in such bondage, they need to know the grace of God, the forgiveness of God. They need to hear the truth. And a lot of people don't like to hear the truth. And so they'll criticize you for speaking out the truth. And so, but we still got to proclaim it because God's word does not return void. It will accomplish what he pleases. And so uh, that's it for today's uh, update. And so until next time, may the Lord radically and outrageously bless you.